Hey everyone, Dobry here. Have you ever wondered how to keep your budget on track and see exactly how you're performing against your goals? In this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to build a dynamic actuals versus budget analysis in Excel that's not only functional, but super easy to use. You'll be able to pick a month, see the comparison for just that month, and also look at an accumulated view up to that month. Stick around because this isn't just about spreadsheets, it's about making your financial data work for you and making sure that you're on top of your performance against your budget. Now let's open Excel and dive in. Now this is a sample personal budget that I generated with ChatGPT. So uh, what we have here is uh, one one year uh, budgeted, I have the salary, dividends that this person is getting from somewhere. Let's assume it's me and those are like historically forecasted, uh, subletting one of the rooms. Then I have my expenses, lease, groceries, utilities, transport, ent entertainment, healthcare, miscellaneous, and so on and so forth. So this is already a pretty good start. So if you're preparing a budget annually and uh, you're trying, at least trying to stick to it, that's already a really good sign for like financial discipline that you're uh, building up, which would be helpful throughout your entire life. I'm giving an example with a personal budget because in past videos, I've always talked about those like big companies and uh, just wanted to have like a different example where uh, you can see how all those concepts can be easily applied in different scenarios. So we can do the, exactly the same thing. Well, obviously diff different line items, but you can follow the exactly the same approach and do that for a company, for your freelance business, or as here for your personal budget. Essentially what I want to have is actuals versus budget comparison. I'm gonna add a few lines up here. Let me just add some formatting and I'm gonna say actuals versus budget comparison. And uh, yeah, this can just be actual versus budget supply. And uh, here's my formatted uh, worksheet. Let me just make those a bit smaller for now. And uh, I'm gonna add a bunch of lines up here. So the first that we'll have is uh, gonna be our selected month, which will be a drop down that we'll use to be able to pick which month are we looking at right now. Then I'll have my actuals versus budget. And uh, here I'll have actuals, I'll have budget, then I'll have a deviation and a percentage deviation. And I'm going a bit faster because uh, I really wanted this to be like from the ground up. So instead of just showing you a template and explaining how it works, I wanted to just build it as we go through. So you'll be really comfortable applying this concept to your specific use case. So I'm gonna format that as a header and uh, I'm also gonna make those a bit like, larger. Actuals, budget, deviation, deviation percentage. I'm also gonna align all those to the right because there are numbers. And I'm gonna copy that and paste it over here. And here we'll show for the month and here accumulated up to this month for the entire year. So what I'll have here is gonna be income. Gonna format that a bit, make it like that. Um, and also add this here, then under income, I'm gonna add my salary, dividends, and subletting a room. Here I'll have total income, format that as a total, copy the formatting here. Then I'll have, I can just copy that down here, and I'll say expenses, and need a few more lines here. And those are my expenses paste those and then I'm also gonna have a total here gonna be total expenses and gonna say savings which is gonna be my total income minus my total expenses method like that and uh, this is my main structure so this is where uh, I'll show this summary then I'm gonna add a few rows here and uh, I'm gonna say here that uh, I'll have my 
actuals. Actually gonna format this like that. And uh, here I'll have line item. And next to it, I'll have uh, the month, but I'm gonna do them like 31st, 1st, 2026. So uh, it's an actual month that I can work with. Then I can use that by employing the end of month formula. Use this start date and add one month. And this, if I copy the formatting, should give me the end of February. I'm gonna copy that over to the site and I need it up to here to have it till December. I'm gonna expand those a bit so that everything is visible. And uh, then I'm also gonna expand that with Control R, format that as a header. And all those, I'm gonna hit Control 1 and uh, I'm gonna open format cells, go to custom, and I'm just gonna say that I want this to be month, year, and uh, they're gonna appear like that. So below that, I'll actually have all my line items. I don't need to separate them because we'll just be using this to load data up in our uh, summary here. So those would gonna add borders and I'm gonna make them light gray and uh, make them blue because those will be like inputted numbers. And uh, what I wanna do after that is uh, I'm just gonna copy the formatting from here to here and uh, I'm gonna copy this entire thing here. I'll then add another line here and I'm gonna say that this is my budget. I don't wanna have all those borders and uh, those are the numbers that uh, make up my budget. All that's left now is to make the functionality up here which would allow us to pull from those and show them up here with uh, the deviation and everything. So first let's make our month drop down right here. I'm gonna go to data, data validation and I'm gonna allow a list and my source will be my months. Hit OK and uh, now I have a drop down that allows me to pick the month. Obviously, I need the same formatting here, but uh, I don't want it to be white on blue. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make it and make it orange, make this black. And uh, I'm also going to add border so it's easier to figure out that this is uh, something that needs to be set. And then here, what I'll have is uh, I'm going to have text for the for the period and I'm going to concatenate text formula. My value would be this here and my format will be the same month, 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 year, year. And this would give me for the period February 26. Format that a bit. I'm going to select this whole thing and uh, center it across. Then I'm going to copy that paste it over here and here we're going to say accumulated from and I'm going to concatenate using the text formula. I'm going to grab the first month down here. Formatting is the same and then I'm going to concatenate another string too and at the end same. I'm going to concatenate text my picked month here and my formatting will be the same. So this would uh, give me accumulated from January 26 to February 26. And if I change that to, let's say, September, I get for the period September accumulated from January to September. Okay, now let's uh, add a total here. It's going to be the sum of Joe's. Copy that to the side. I'm um, actually going to select all those and uh, format them as uh, a number. This is uh, one of my totals. The other will be down here. My expenses will be this. Copy that to the side. And then my savings will be my income minus my expenses. Deviation will be my actuals minus my budget. Copy that down. Copy it and uh, paste it all the way here. Then I'm going to grab the formatting from here and top uh, move it over here. Next, uh, my deviation will be this divided over my budget. So where I sit compared to the budget. Okay, this is giving a division by zero. 
So we're gonna say if error, give me any. Okay, enter. I'm also gonna align it to the right. Copy that down everywhere. Again, let's grab those, paste them here, format that to the side, make it a percentage, and show one number after the decimal point. And now I can grab all this and paste it over here. And this is our entire structure. So the only thing we need to do now is make sure that we're loading the correct data based off uh, this month that we pick up here. In order to do that, we're going to say X lookup. Our lookup value will be our month here. And we're going to fix it with a four. Our lookup array, though remember this is actuals, will be this here. I'm going to fix that with F4 as well. And our return array will be to salary. So it's going to be this over here. Okay. And now I can copy that down. And uh, as soon as I, let's say, enter 500 here and switch that to January, we now see it up here. We can copy that and paste it for leases. But uh, you see now that uh, we are all the way down to transport. So I'm going to move that up to leases. And because I'm showing those positive here, remember we did this minus this, I'm going to add a negative sign in the front because here we're subtracting one from the other. Plus I prefer to look at positive numbers because it makes it easier to visualize the cost. We can then copy that all the way uh, to the bottom. And just remove that for now. And uh, now we can do the same thing for our budget. So we have X lookup, our month fixed with F4. Our lookup array will be this here, fixed with F4. And uh, our return array will be our salary up here. Enter. And uh, we got our 4,500. We can copy that down. We got others. Copy that here. Make sure to bring that up to leases and then we can copy that down with control d and the only thing we forgot to do is make that negative so i'm gonna copy it down again and uh, i now have my budget being loaded for the month and my actuals even though i don't have any actual if i switch that to july i'll see the numbers for july obviously here it's mostly the same number but for example, for dividends, it's a different number. And uh, for July, we have 346 and I have 346 here. OK, let's switch back to January and uh, let's actually add some actuals. So, for example, here we're going to say 4500 here. Let's say we got 250 here. We got 650 from subletting. Uh, this was uh, minus. 1400 groceries was minus 560 utilities was minus 200 this was minus 120 minus 17 1, 175 minus 125 and uh, miscellaneous was 270 for example okay I actually forgot to format those as values as well okay I can just copy those over and say okay dividends was 280 nine subletting the rooms the same groceries was uh, 420 utilities was uh, 180 transport was 165 entertainment was 350 this month healthcare the same and uh, miscellaneous was 325 for example uh, so now when i look at january i get this comparison and uh, you see here that we have the deviation and the deviation percentage and if I switch to February, I get the numbers for February. What I want to do here is accumulate those. Right now, I want to be showing from January to February included. So we'll use a similar formula. We're going to say some, at least as a structure, we're going to say some ifs. And uh, for actuals, my sum range for salary will be this thing here. And uh, not going to fix it. And my criteria range will be those months up here fixed with f4 and my criteria will be in quotation marks less or equal to and i'm gonna concatenate this up here this month up here close that and you see now that we have two months worth of salary up here and the reason why this works with the uh 
below or equal to is because remember those are actual dates that we just formatted to appear as a month and year and the same here so we're able to compare dates so if this date matches this date or is above it we're including this if i switch january it should be exactly the same okay let's go back to february and now copy this down and copy that paste it over here make sure that uh, i adjust this to be up to leases and then i can copy that down of course adding the negative sign in the front we can then do the same for our budget sum ifs my sum range will be my salary here and my criteria range will be my months fixed with f4 and my criteria will be below or equal to in quotation marks concatenated to my month up here fixed with f4 copy that down can then here add a negative sign and to make sure that i bring that up to leases enter copy that down and this is my accumulated view done essentially so if i'm looking at january those are going to be the same because it's showing january and then it's showing january to january if i switch to february i can see here that this is accumulated so we see that for february we essentially saved 51 more than we were planning to but since in january we saved 11 less than we were planning to the net of those two is 40 and accumulated as a february we only saved 40 bucks so two formulas to remember here x lookup based on the month and uh, looking at the row with the dates and the row with uh, the respective line item and then some ifs where we essentially sum every period's uh, value for the line item as long as this value the actual period itself is less than what we have selected here you see it's really easy to set up something like that and it's very simple on the surface but it's actually really helpful to have that especially if we're talking about a business or a freelancing practice it's much simpler to look at your numbers and uh, track your performance against what you were planning to do with a comparison analysis between the actuals and uh, the budgeted values when i'm doing this for a company i would even go and uh, have like a little notes denoted like that on the site where there's a large discrepancy and then somewhere to the side or at the bottom or in some case even in a separate word file i have like detailed notes for example what happened here why did we get more dividends so on and so forth if you want to dive even deeper into excel for financial modeling check out my full financial modeling course available right here on youtube absolutely for free it's a five hour course that will take you from a empty excel spreadsheet all the way through to a fully built dynamic assumptions driven financial model in excel thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the first video